What's up? Hi. Hi, Anna. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're great. So they wouldn't tell us anything about you other than your name. Okay. This is like we're on a dating show or something right now. So welcome to the Calm Down Podcast. Tell us everything about you, where you are right now, your profession and all the things. And we're so happy to have you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, well, they may have gotten the one thing wrong because technically my name is Anna, but I go by AJ. So love that. Right. I feel like we can do nicknames. We're on that level. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I am a weekend sports anchor and reporter at a local television station in Louisiana. It's my first job out of college in 23. So I'm about a year and a half into it and just kind of, you know, finding what work life balance is. Apparently that's pretty important. Definitely have to ask for this. So that's kind of what my question is in relation to you. I love that. E, you start. Well, first of all, I got to know, are you doing one man banding over there or are you way ahead of the game on that? Because that was the worst. I mean, getting it in focus, white balance. I always forgot that damn white balance. For those of you that are listening, what she means is you have to be your own producer, cameraman, audio person and reporter. That's a one man band. AJ, you're clearly doing that. Good for you. Thank you. But yeah, I guess the specific question that I said, just so I don't get in trouble with the producer is um, how do you balance being a go-getter and being available to your boss without, you know, lacking rest or burning out really early on? Oof. I'll be honest with you, and this is probably not the correct, politically correct thing to say. It's your first job, you said, your very first one out of college. You can rest later. I mean, this is like the time, I hate to say it, for me, it would just be balls to the wall. It just really, really would. It's just, you've got plenty, plenty of time um, later on in your life to get those Z's. Be available for anything because you know what? You don't know what's going to come your way. Say someone's sick, say someone's on vacation and oh, they need you to go cover the top story in the A block. Maybe you're already doing that, but just with your first gig, your second gig, Shoot, I'm 43 and I don't know what gig this is for me, but Carissa knows this. When our boss, when Fox calls, we drop it all. Now, listen, you know, later on in your life, when you have your family, your husband, there's something really important in your life. Yes, you should, you know, probably be like, eh, this takes precedent. But right now, this is such a cutthroat competitive industry. I would just be available. But make sure you get your sleep when you can. I was just going to say, AJ, I have a list Uh, In case anybody asked what my advice was for you, number four on the list says, say yes, figure out the rest later. (laughs) And the reason I say that is because right before we came on, I got a call from our executive producer uh, for our NFL show. And he asked me to do something completely unrelated to football. Uh, And he said, what are you doing on May 1st? Well, I have a birthday trip planned on May 1st, but I didn't tell him that. I said, nothing. Mm -hmm. What do you need? And I said, yes, and I'll figure out the rest later. And I'm 100 years old. Uh, and been doing this, luckily, for a long enough time. But say yes and figure out the rest later. I know you'll be tired and all of the things, but if you love this job enough, you'll figure it out, and they won't forget that you made the adjustments, and the time will come for them to give you a break. And that's why there's Botox, by the way, for those wrinkles and under black eye. I mean, shoot it up later on in your life. (laughs) Just don't do it too much, because I also (laughs) made that mistake. And my dad said, whoa, you're looking like a cat. So just be careful you don't do too much. Yeah. Did we answer your question? Oh, 100%. Is it not the answer you wanted? No, I'm just kidding. Probably not. (laughs) Whatever y'all say is the right answer. Well, thank you for thank you for uh, reaching out. We really appreciate it. And your accent. I'm so envious. Yes. Good luck to you. I like it. Good luck. (laughs) Bye. Molly. (laughs) <laughs> well, you look fantastic. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> hair, hair, that's you? more than we can say for ourselves. <laughs> I want to do my hair and makeup nice for you guys. So, <laughs> Molly's a dream. Where are you coming to us from? Where are you? So, I'm currently a student at the University of Nebraska. So, I'm in Lincoln. Whew. But I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. So, yeah, check, all over the place. Check all of the boxes. <laughs> I want to talk about this blow up that you have. I doing my hair years ago. Um, thank you for joining us. You're so sweet. To, I heard we, you have a few questions. What would maybe one or two of your top favorite be that you want to ask us? For sure. So my first question is for Miss Erin specifically. And I am also a dancer. And I also know that you grew up a dancer. So I wanted to know kind of how you felt 
dancing might have helped you with your career or even with your confidence in the world of broadcasting? Well, funny you should mention that, Molly. I have my pom-poms right here. No way! Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. They don't leave me, Molly. You know, you always hold on to those puppies. Um, it's an interesting question because I started dancing early in my life and then obviously did it through college. Um, but it's kind of like you're on when you know it's time to be on. And Carissa can attest to this. Listen, if you're having a bad day, you know, you got bad news at home, somebody's sick, fight with your husband, your girlfriend's going through something, crappy text message just comes through and they're like, five, four, three, two. Welcome back. There you are. I mean, it just, you have to put it all aside, right? And that's a same kind of thing with dance competitions. My sister and I used to always joke, we'd be like beating the crap out of each other. I want the hairbrush. No, you want the hairbrush. And five and six and seven and eight. So it's like, you know, when to turn it on, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So my other question is, what was a moment in your career that you felt like really took you to the next level or like a very pivotal moment for you? Yeah, mine was I had just been let go by TBS and Turner, and um, I knew that the uh, NHL team that I had covered um, as my first job out of college was going to make it to the Stanley Cup playoffs. And so I worked really hard reaching out to ESPN and just said, hey, give me a, you know, a tryout kind of for your Stanley Cup playoff coverage. And they did. I had a three month tryout. I was so excited. Um, I took three flights and a drive to get from Calgary to Tampa to cover the Stanley Cup, you know, finals, which my team was in, which was so freaking awesome. I was so excited. I lost 10 to 15 pounds, which was also great. But no, I mean, I afterwards, <laughs> the doctor was like, are you OK? And I was like, yes, I just covered the Stanley Cup finals. Um, and my and my team that I, you know, started my career with won it, which was awesome. And then I signed a three year deal with ESPN after that and started Saturday night football and college game day. So that really kicked it off for me. But I don't think I ever believed, you know, doing that Stanley Cup run would kind of propel my career and my journey throughout all this. It was freaking awesome. And uh, I loved every minute of it. And it's always on sometimes, you know, on the NHL network. And I'm wearing this fabulous lime green and Taylor top for the game seven of the Stanley Cup finals. It's a winner. <laughs> that was your top outfit at the point. Again, Molly yeah, wasn't was. born then uh, when Ann Taylor was around, but yeah. I've been to an Ann Taylor. Molly, <laughs> I don't believe that. Not not with that hair. You've not with been my to... mom. With what? my mom. Not <laughs> Molly for the win. They are funny in Nebraska. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's called a walk-off, Molly. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, I want to get you in some Nebraska wear gear. We've got to get your information after this. We're going to hook you up. Okay. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you oh, so much. Well, no, thank you for being a dream. <laughs> my dog. <laughs> That means so much hearing that from both of y'all because you two are both people I've looked up to for literally my whole entire life. And you guys are like part of the reason why I want to get into sports broadcasting. So thank you. Thank you so, 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 so much. <laughs> I look up to your hair care, Molly. I really do. Thank you. It's an old Southern Oh, trick. what is it? So my, ever since I was like three years old, my mom has always used like those foam rollers in oh, my yeah. hair. And if you, like, put them in, like, away from your face, it mm -hmm. makes your hair just so beautiful. I have pictures of me from, like, Easter when I'm, like, two years old. And I just have, like, this huge head of curly hair. And I still use it now, even in my 20s, so. <laughs> right, the pink sponge ones with the clasp on it? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You're adorable. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi, Jessica. Hi, how are you? Good. What's happening? Oh, I'm good. Where are you right now? I'm out of Maryland. I'm originally from Jersey, but I'm out of Maryland. I love it. You have great lighting. Thank you yeah, for reaching you. out to us. We heard you have a question and we will answer it the best we can. And if you hang up and you're like, that's a terrible answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're okay. You ready? <laughs> yeah, wow. How do you be assertive with your colleagues or team without seeming like a bitch? Ooh, good question. You better work, bitch. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll take this. I mean, I think you have to kind of read the room and know your place. I mean, I was thinking about this earlier when I read it about like if I marched into the room and I was like, you listen up, Joe Buck, you listen up, Troy Aikman. Nah, maybe not the approach you want to take. I mean, look, if I feel like I need to be heard and there's a point I'd like them to help, you know, listen to or get help with, they will. But also 
Troy Aikman's got three Super Bowls. You know, Joe Buck's a Hall of Fame broadcaster. He's been doing this forever. So I, I, they do hear me when I need to. Now, I when I first saw your question, I will tell you I read it wrong because I was like, no, 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 I am assertive. I Not so much with my team because... Again, if if there's something I need to say and I want to be listened to, they will. I just, I want to make sure they're taken care of. You just read the room. You don't want to march in because, Chris, I'll say this, and, and this is point blank. If you're bossy, you'll always be labeled as a bitch being a female, which sucks, but that's just part of the whole gender thing. So I think there's a way to really, wow, this is like advice for my marriage. There's a way to really communicate how you're feeling and what you want the boys to hear or the men that you work with to hear. Now, the other side, when I read this question really fast, I was like, yeah, no, I'm assertive. And I don't understand when people don't love the job as much as me, or they aren't obsessed about it, or they aren't wanting to talk about the Super Bowl for five hours the day after, like Chris and I did. Um, That's a totally separate question. We can, you know, delete this point out. But yeah, I, I am assertive. I am very, very passionate, but I think it's very important with being a female, knowing who you work work with, reading the room to kind of communicate all of that. Mm-hmm. I, I agree CT. with you. I, a lot of those points um, resonate with me. I would say, Jessica, uh, on the pregame show, for example, as the only female on that set, yeah. um, I, I recognize that I am in a unique position, but I've been given that position by my bosses because they think they, that I can handle it. And what I mean handle it is there's a lot of personalities and egos, and it's my job to be the quarterback of that. And so I don't need to tell all the guys how smart I am or how much I know about the game, or I don't need to tell the viewer how smart I am or how much I know about the game. That position has already warranted that. So I I think that if you remember that you're there because people that sign our checks gave you that opportunity, you don't need to overemphasize it. Pick your spots, like Aaron said, and remember that the experience from Troy or, you know, Joe, even if he hasn't played the game of football, his experience in that seat um, was provided by our bosses. Mm -hmm. So um, defer to the authorities, but remember your position is authoritative in and of itself. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. It doesn't help being from Jersey because I have that little sassy attitude. Oh, no, it helps. (laughs) It helps. You got to throw elbows when you want to. And I would just say this give it back to them, but be self-deprecating. For example, yes. um, one time on set, you know, I, I took a jab at Tony and he said something back like, oh, cool extensions. I was like, oh, thanks for noticing. You can't be offended. If you're going to give it, then you have to take it. And I think a big part of that, uh, I, I don't want to always equate this is like a boys club, but you are in the locker room uh, yeah. that they're used to being in. And so they they talk in a certain way. So be be strong enough to be in there, but respectful enough that that someone's letting you in there uh, because of your skill set and your ability not to take things too seriously. Yeah, it's a good point. I hope that helps. Awesome. No, it did. Thank you so much. I think I Tony wears hair extensions too, by the way. Well, I mean, I, I did mention something. Maybe some that. lip gloss. I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Bye. Nice meeting you. Thanks you know. for your question. Hi, how are you? Hi. Thank you for Hello. listening and thank you for caring enough to ask a question. Oh my gosh, I love the podcast. I feel like it's like listening to my two like really cool older sisters talk. Whoa, <laughs> how old? <laughs> Not too old, just too very youthful. <laughs> Good answer. But no, I really enjoyed all the episodes so far. And you answered one of my questions too in the last episode. So I feel like I'm on fire. Oh, love it. We'll fire away with some more. Yeah. Um, So my question for you guys this time is what is the number one piece of career advice that you would give to someone? Go ahead, CT. Okay. Well, I'm glad you asked, Emily, because I've got five (laughs) options here. Okay. (laughs) Are you writing it down? Write it down. I write everything down. Okay. So I would say this. I'm going to give you five and then you can pick out which one you think is the best. All right. My number one is be willing to do the work for the least amount of money, because the money will come if you do the work. My next is be kind to everyone. And by everyone, I mean, mm-hmm. audio, lighting, uh, the guy that the security guard that works the front desk. Uh, just because your quote, talent uh, doesn't mean you should act like it. And you never know where those people are going to end up. So just treat everyone the same. 
Be and there's good. always preconceived notions about you now that you're talent. Yeah. Like just because someone offers to carry your clothes for you, just carry them yourself. You got two yeah. hands. Okay. Um, <laughs> be a good, <laughs> be, be a good teammate. Remember that in broadcasting, you're part of a team. Uh, it's Whoa. not an individual sport. So uh, the better teammate you are, the longer people want to keep you on the team. Uh, another one is say yes, figure out the rest later. And the last I would say is listen. So many times, I think early on in my career, I had I was worried about what question I was going to ask next. And I think it's really important to listen to the answer of the, the original question. Mm -hmm. And that might lead to a better second question. So do what you want with that. Mm -hmm. It's um, hopefully served me well in my career. But I think that we continue. And I, I don't want to speak for Erin, but I, I know she feels this way. Continue to learn and always have new advice that's been given to us from people that have done this even longer than we have. I would yeah, add. Those are all so good. I don't know how to pick one. Well, well you don't. Well. You can have them all. I'll send this to you in an email. <laughs> Perfect. I actually wrote them down because I feel like I'm going to get fired now that I hadn't been obeying a couple of those. Um, <laughs> I would also add have thick skin. That's something an NHL head coach told me when I complained to him about what people were writing about me on the blogs back in the day. So I really would be your older sister or your older friend by saying that word. And then study. Like, I, I didn't even apply myself or study this hard in college. Got through it in four years. Um, my parents were probably going to kill me if I didn't. But if I had applied um, this much passion, maybe to my schoolwork, I would have done a little better. But yeah, you just you really, really have to study. And, and I would say, too, and this is something my college professor said, was that you just really, really have to love it because you're going to miss holidays. I work Thanksgiving and Christmas. You're going to miss weddings. You're going to miss time with your family. Uh, marriage is, you know, going to be a lot harder. Dating is a lot harder when you're in this industry. So you genuinely have to love it and love living out of a suitcase. I mean, there's nothing more I love. And don't forget the pillow. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> All very helpful, very useful. So definitely things to apply in real life pretty easily. Emily's never going to listen again. Like, and we're all out of time. That's been 60 yeah. minutes of answering one question. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm so excited to be here and can't wait to call my dad as soon as we hang up and tell him. <laughs> What's your dad's name? His name is Tom. Tom, well, as you're with two people who couldn't love their dads anymore. In fact, our husbands sometimes are like, do you love us at all compared to the way that we talk <laughs> about our dads? So tell your father we said hello. I will. He'll be so excited. Aww. Thanks, Emily. Bye. Thank you. Have a good one. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.